Maury Stokes. Maury Stokes is a name that doesn't really ring a bell with most people. Um, but in many ways, Maury Stokes was the forerunner to great NBA players such as Magic Johnson or even LeBron James. Uh, and the reason I make the comparison is because Maury Stokes was an all-around player. Um, number one, he was huge by NBA standards at the time. He, in the 1950s, Maury Stokes was 6'7 and 232 pounds. And um, he was uh, a tenacious rebounder. Uh, through the three seasons that he played in the NBA, from 1955 to 1958, he led the league with 3,492 uh, rebounds, uh, edging out even the great Bob Pettit as the best rebounder during that time period. But not only could he rebound uh, the best in the league at that time, he could score. Now, he wasn't a tremendous scorer, and he wasn't a great shooter. But he was a capable scorer, a tenacious rebounder, a great defensive player, and he was a great passer. Uh, he recorded over 1,000 assists during that three-year span, which was second only to the Houdini of the hardwood, the Boston Celtic legend, Bob Pettit, during that three-year period of time. Uh, so why isn't Maury Stokes in the Hall of Fame? Well, it's because he suffered a devastating injury in 1958, the very end of the regular season, the last game of the regular season, which would severely alter his life and his NBA career and ultimately prematurely end his life. Those who <clears throat> played with Maury Stokes all say the same thing that either with or against Maury Stokes say that he should be up there with a Dr. J, a Michael Jordan, a Larry Bird, a Magic Johnson. He should be up there. And if he were playing in today's league, uh, if, he was just, if he had just played in the modern era, he would be a household name. Maury Stokes chose to play with the Rochester Royals. Um, even though he was offered a huge sum by the, the Harlem Gold Trotters to play for them, at the time an insane amount of money, $15,000. Uh, this was a time when many of the NBA stars was only getting seven to $10,000 per season. And... Um, Maury Stokes chose to play for what was then, uh, he was drafted by the Rochester Royals. Chose to play for the NBA. He was drafted as the number two pick in the 1955 draft by the then Rochester Royals, uh, who would later become the Cincinnati Royals and ultimately later the Sacramento Kings. Uh, in his first game in the NBA, Maury Stokes made a tre <laughs> tremendous impact, uh, scoring 32 points, grabbing 20 rebounds, and dishing out eight assists. He would go on to win Rookie of the Year honors that year, averaging 17 points, pulling down 16 rebounds per game, and he would be uh, an all-NBA second pick all three seasons uh, that he played. His second season in the NBA, he set a record for most rebounds in a season. I think it was 1,256. I think that's the total. I might be off with that a little bit. But he also averaged 17.4 rebounds per game. That was an all-time record at that time. Of course, that would be ultimately surpassed by Wilt Chamberlain, Bill Russell, uh, Jerry Lucas, and Nate Thurman. I guess it was ultimately surpassed, too, by Dennis Rodman, uh, comes to mind, 
uh, maybe another some other players have, have various players have passed that too. Uh, maybe Truck Robertson, uh, some other guys like that. But for his time period, there was no question that he was the greatest rebounder in the league. But like I said, he was all around player. He was getting triple doubles in a time play, time period where players weren't doing that. And um, he was one of only, I think, four or five players to record four consecutive triple doubles during uh, the regular season. And um, during the last game of the regular season, 1957-58 season, Maury Stokes was injured. Um, I think he was driving to the basket where he uh, was playing against, uh, who were they playing against? I think it was the Minneapolis Lakers. And they were in Minneapolis. And he was driving to the basket when he was fouled by Vern Mickelson, the great uh, forward for the Lakers at the time. And he had his legs cut from under him. And Maurice Stokes hit his head hard, and I mean hard, on the parquet floor. And he had to be revived by smelling salts. I think he was unconscious for actually several minutes. And he was revived by smelling salts, came back into the game. Yeah, this is the era that the league was back then, okay? Uh, this was, that era would make the 80s look soft, okay? That, that, that's when you could maul players. Knock players' teeth out, you know. Um, a foul back then is when, you know, an elbow to the head might draw blood or something like that. And well, it's not that barbaric, but today's NBA is like puff, puff ball, pussy ball compared to that era. But Maurice Schultz was revived by smelling salts, came back to the game, dropped twenty four points, and uh, pulled down nineteen rebounds for a victory in that game. Uh, but the three games later, three days later, excuse me, in the opening playoff game against the Detroit Pistons, Stokes uh, started to become ill. Uh, he started to become feeling uh, nauseated and started vomiting before the game. Uh, but he played in game one and had 12 points and 15 rebounds. But he didn't look himself. He looked lethargic, sluggish, and slow. And the team ultimately lost the game. Now, I think this was back in the era where the NBA, the first opening round was a best two, uh, best two out of three. So the next game was in Cincinnati, so they boarded a the flight and go to Cincinnati. On the flight, Stokes became even more ill. And uh, while Stokes was colla uh, was walking uh, to the airplane to return to Cincinnati, Stokes collapsed while walking with teammates. Uh, reportedly, Stokes said, I need some help here. Something's wrong with me. They took him onto the, pl onto the plane and... Um, at the time, I think what was going on, if I remember correctly, I think Stokes and some of the other players had been drinking. This was a different era, guys, okay? <laughs> they had been drinking uh, throughout the day or, or, or prior to the game, and they thought that maybe Maurice Stokes was having a hangover, and that's why he played that way, and you know, and he'd been vomiting because of the after effects of drinking alcohol. And also, Jack Twyman himself had the flu. So they thought that maybe, you know, it was drinking, plus he had the flu or whatever. But on the plane, you could see something was seriously wrong with Maury Stokes. He started having uh, sweating. All, I mean, he started sweating profusely. He started trembling. He was having seizures. I guess now what, what, what people know he was having seizures. They started packing him with ice. Um... And then Maurice Stokes said he started losing, uh, feeling in his, his feelings in his extremities, and he couldn't walk, uh, couldn't move. 
ultimately. He um, lapsed into a coma after he was rushed in the hospital and the plane landed. And he was paralyzed from the neck down. He was diagnosed with suffering from post-traumatic encephalopathy, which was a brain injury due to the direct uh, cause being that hard fall uh, that he took. He injured his, injured his head and ultimately injured his brain. And his damaged his motor control center. So apparently what happened was when he injured his head, I'm assuming that his brain swelled. And this damaged the area of his brain that controlled motor skills. Uh, when it became clear that Maury Stokes would require expensive around-the-clock care, the royal owners did what you expect them to do. They immediately cut him, and there was no pension at that particular time, so Maury Stokes had nobody to care for him. He had no income. And also, this is a time period where a lot of players did not even live in the city that the team they played, you know, the city they played for. I think Jack Twyman was the only the only player that actually lived in the Cincinnati area. And this was also a time where NBA players weren't making that much more uh, if they made more at all than the average American. Most of the times, these guys had to have all-season jobs for income. And Jack Twyman, the great player that he was, I think sold insurance during the off-season. So actually, it ended up falling upon Jack Twyman to become Maury Stokes' caregiver. So... For a couple of years, he and the family, uh, the family weren't really living in Cincinnati area. They still lived in Pennsylvania. Uh, they used and eventually depleted their savings to help care for Maurice. But in a couple of, not long after, put it like that, the income, uh, the money was depleted. And they didn't have any type of way to pay for Maury Stokes' care. So what happened was, I think for several years, unbeknownst to many people, and probably unbeknownst to many people who are listening to this video, there was, a, there was an NBA celebrity all-star game, a uh, fundraiser game that was played in upstate New York, I think it was. And the, and the proceeds for that game would go directly for the care of Maury Stokes. And his picture that I'm using in this video is from one of the later games. As you can see, Wilt's a little bit older right here. That's probably from the late 60s, judging by how big Wilt looks right there. But in the inaugural game, I think it was 1959, uh, just before Wilt entered the NBA, uh, this is actually one of the first times, like this was the first time that Wilt actually played against NBA caliber, caliber players. Um, this game might have been one of the reasons why Wilt boasted in that uh, clip you've probably seen him say, well, I'm pretty confident that I'll be able to handle myself man-to-man -man with almost anyone in the league. It's probably one of the reasons why he felt confident to say that because in this All-Star game, I'm not trying to make this about Wilt Chamberlain, but in, one of the, in that uh, game where he only played uh, maybe 15 minutes, of the game, guess what Wilt did in 15 minutes? Scored 24 points, grabbed 14 rebounds, and blocked 10 shots. So, yeah, Wilt pretty much said, yeah, I think I can handle myself with these NBA players. But, um, Maurice Stokes was severely affected by the injury. Uh, he could no longer talk. Uh, his intellect was intact, but he couldn't communicate. It left him mute. So he had to learn how to use nonverbal gestures to communicate. Blinking. Um, through grueling physical regimen, uh, he was able to, to get some physical movement back. Um, but throughout the 1960s, his physical condition deteriorated. And in late March 1970, Maurice Stokes suffered a massive heart attack. 
and one week later, he was dead at the age of only 36 years old. Um, I would assume, I'm not a doctor, but I would assume because of his lack of mobility, the fact he wasn't able to move much, that this probably accelerated the process of atherosclerosis. And he probably had the arteries of a man who's probably in his 70s or 80s when he was only 36 years old. That's why it's always important to keep moving and, and activity. And then it's cholesterol busters. You know, it keeps your blood flowing and keeps the cholesterol from clogging your arteries. And I'm just assuming, just for the little limited medical knowledge that I have, that him being a quadriplegic, more or less, uh, accelerated the process of atherosclerosis. Uh, for a man that young to suffer a massive heart attack. Um, but he and Jack Twyman were friends, dear, dear friends. And the loss of Maury Stokes or Big Mo, as he was called uh, during his days of playing, and I'm pretty sure they still called him afterward, uh, was devastating to Jack Twyman. And he, Jack Twyman himself, like I said, was a great player. Jack Twyman, Twyman was enshrined in the Nace Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame in 1983. Afterward, he petitioned the committee that uh, assigns honorary uh, Hall of Fame inductees to induct Maurice Stokes. And ultimately, Jack Twyman lived to see that. In 2004, Maurice Stokes was inducted into the Nace Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame and on May 30th, 2012, uh, the great Jack Twyman himself died. Uh, I think he was 78 years old. Um, Maurice Stokes, in the three NBA seasons that he played, was a three-time NBA All-Star, three-time All-NBA second team. He was the 1956 NBA Rookie of the Year. In 1956-57 season, he led the NBA in rebounding. And ultimately, the Sacramento Kings retired Maurice Stokes, number 12. For his career, listen to these numbers. Maurice Stokes averaged 16.4 points, 17.3 rebounds, and 5.3 assists per game. The man was a walking triple-double. And uh, it's a shame what happened to him. It could have happened to far many other players. And when you think about what happened to Maurice Stokes, when you think about what happened to other athletes uh, in various sports as far as uh, career-ending injuries, although as fans we want to kind of see the combatantness, especially as males, we want to see that combat, that physicality of the game, it does make sense from a financial aspect from the owner's standpoint and also from a safety standpoint because these players are investments it does make sense that some of the physical uh nonsense has been cut out in the nba you know we, we sometimes rag about being soft right but when we look at maury stokes and what could have been sometimes you have to wonder if these guys know a little bit more than what we know you know so in conclusion uh, rest in peace, Maurice Stokes. Uh, he would have been one of the all-time greats, all one of the all-time all-time greats. I mean, he could have been some of his some of his peers think he could have been all-around player. Uh, Dolph Shea said that he thought that Maurice Stokes would have. He thought he could have been the first six-seven guy because at that time guards were five eleven, five ten, five nine, six feet maybe. Six foot one, uh, Dolph. Uh, Bob, excuse me, Bob Cousy was actually considered probably a somewhat large guard at the time at six one, one seventy, one seventy five. But he said that Maury Stokes at six seven could have been the first player that he thought that could have played guard. We got to remember this is the nineteen fifties. Like I said, when most guards were probably five nine to six feet tall. So that's high pra praise from the legendary Dolph Shays. But uh, rest in peace to Maury Stokes. Rest in peace to Jack Twyman um, and Maurice Stokes, Big Mo, great player, great player.